Hey there, so this is the Barry Harris Harmonic Method for guitar. So I think I started talking about Barry Harris stuff like a year ago or so, and I wasn't aware of this book, and a lot of people commented and said that there's a guitar book, a Barry Harris book for guitar that you need to get a copy of. And so then I made some more Barry Harris videos where I said I'm aware of this book, but I can't find a copy. It doesn't seem to be in print. And somebody was kind enough to send me a link to where I can get a copy and I'll post a link to that so you can get your copy and if you are aware of any other websites that's selling this book still you uh, let me know and I'll put it in the comments I'll, I'll, I'll pin the comment I've played through this book it's really good and if you're serious about jazz guitar theory you, this book is a must I'm not gonna share the content of the book obviously and uh, for copyright reasons and plus I don't want to take credit for things that I didn't come up with. I've said this before, the idea of my videos is not to give you the content of a book, but rather to show you how I use the information in this book to um, incorporate it into my own playing and to help me get better at understanding jazz theory and all that. So there is one chapter in the book, one concept that he calls movement. So I guess harmonic movement so the idea is to think about certain chord progressions that we find all the time in jazz tunes as movement. And then I always try to find a practical application for the stuff that I try to cover. So some tunes. So we can look at this idea. It's just one idea out of many from this book. And I'll show you some tunes where you can find this. And later on in the video at the end, I will maybe give you an overview of all the different chapters in the book, but without giving you the actual PDFs or anything like that. So lots of stuff. Let's get started. So before we start, there are a couple of things, some rules, if you will, that we need to make sure that we understand before we move on. First thing is that we have to remember that it's a major chord. We're going to look at major here, uh, not minor, but major tonality. So a major chord, you want to think of a major six chord, right? But it's also an A minor, so we need to keep that in mind, that C major is a C major chord, but it's also, it could be an A minor. Then surrounding every chord, every major chord, there is a dominant chord. And I can do the inversions, C major 6. That's what Barry Harris calls the the major six diminished scale. You can play it as a scale. But I've covered that before in previous videos. Then we need to remember that if we play C major six like that, we can borrow notes from the surrounding diminished chords. Where it's just the same diminished chord, right? This is the same as that. So for example, the B. That's not a, that note belongs to the diminished chord. Okay, so we need to remember that. Also something I've talked about in previous videos. Also remember that we want to think of these chords, four part chords as voices. So soprano, alto, tenor, bass. And we can play partial chords we can remove, get rid of any of the voices. So we can play, for example, like this instead, which is a much more user-friendly guitar voicing. Instead of that, I had a Zoom lesson yesterday, actually, where my student was struggling with this shape. It's an awkward fingering, right? It's much better to play like that, perhaps. So that's just, in this case, I left out the, the tenor, right? So it's a tenor-less voicing. There's also another thing we need to remember, and that is that the diminished chord, let's say D diminished, if I drop any of the notes, I get a dominant chord. So this could be a D flat, which also kind of belongs to the key of C major, right? Because it's the sub five. If I drop the second note from the bottom, 
I get a G7, which obviously belongs to the key of C major. If I drop the second note from the top, get a B flat 7, which is a little bit uh, not obvious how it relates to C major, but kind of does. And then if I drop the top note, I get an E7. Which is, you know, kind of belongs to C major because it's the 5 of the minor chord. I could also raise any of the notes and then I create a minor 6 chord. So if I raise the bottom note, that's a A flat minor 6, which it works in C major because it's the altered of the G, right? If I raise the the second, the tenor voice, I get a D minor 6. If I raise the alto, I get a D minor 7 flat 5. Works great in C major. And if I raise the top note, I get B minor 6, which is a little bit weird. So we need to keep these things in mind because they kind of, they're gonna show up later on in this video. Okay, so I said I was gonna talk about movement. So the first movement is this. So I play C6 to F6. So you need to wrap your head around the idea that this is a F chord, not a D minor seven. I mean, it is a D minor seven, but we're thinking of it as an F6 here. playing the drop two and all the inversions on the middle set of strings. C6 to F6. And this, the book goes over all the possible inversions, all the different string combinations and everything you could wish for. Okay, now we're gonna do this. I throw in a diminished chord between those two chords. So you could call it C6, C diminished. But the C diminished is obviously also E flat diminished, F sharp diminished, and A diminished, because it's they share the same notes. So Let's add one more chord after a diminished chord. So B diminished. Then we get this. set of strings and with different drop voicings as well. Now if I choose to play those more user-friendly guitar chords where I drop the tenor I can get play this. Oh sorry. Then you have pretty much every Jack Reinhardt tune intro. second chord is like a flat 3 diminished, right? But we're not really thinking about it that way here. We're thinking about the movement. So if we go back to this, two notes are the same, the C and the A, and the other two notes go down. So can you hear it? That the, the easiest note to hear is the top note, right? And the 
bottom note which stays. But can you hear this note? It also stays. And then you have. If I play it here, it's almost like I play. E minor to E flat diminished to D minor 7, right? But if you're thinking about it the Barry Harris way, it's the same thing as this. It's just different versions. If I play E minor here, it's still the same as this. It's just that I borrowed two notes from the diminished chord, right? Remember, you could always borrow notes. So it's actually this. this. But with two borrowed notes. So some tunes uh, that has this in like I can't give you anything by love. Let me know if you can think of another tune with the same. I guess uh, someday my prince will come, right? If we look at the diminished chord, that could be also played as an F sharp diminished, right? Same thing. Remember that I could raise an any note and create a minus seven flat five chord or minus six chord, depending on how you look at it. I could play F sharp to F sharp minor seven flat five. That's kind of a funny move. play that three diminished down here and I drop the lowest note I get a B7 so that also works or both of them C is uh, going on here. So this is actually explains a few tunes like Stella by Starlight, right? So it starts on a diminished chord. Originally it starts on a diminished chord. So if we were playing C it would be the flat three diminished. And then two, five. But then they changed it to F sharp minus F5 B7. But that explains that funny chord change for how did you go from B7 to D minor? It doesn't make any sense if you think of functional harmony, but if you think about it this way, it makes total sense. It replaces this diminished chord. Instead of playing E flat diminished or D sharp diminished, you can play F sharp minus F flat five to B seven. Now let's go to the top set of strings. So C six diminished F six. Can you hear this? If I do this instead, then it's like I'm playing a, an F 
F minor 6, there, right? Then I have the kind of turnaround that we guitar players always play with. So that's part of the same kind of movement. So it is basically a turnaround, which means rhythm changes. Because we often learn rhythm changes like this. Like C major, A minor, D minor. But it could also be C, E flat diminished, D, same thing, it's just different bass notes. It's the same movement. So the first tune I want us to look at is St. Thomas, because it's pretty much rhythm changes. So we're gonna play C, E flat diminished, and then like that, right? Instead of going, we're going up. C, C, E in the bass, F6, six, six, F sharp diminished, C. And then we play a G. So I'll play the whole progression. nice kind of voice leading places where you can go that's a nice C6 F sharp diminished
those little transitions, like the half steps between the chord changes, that's where you find the good stuff. So I can kind of improvise using those kind of chord tones. So it gives you a completely different approach to uh, how you kind of relate to the chord changes of rhythm changes, right? It's very different from thinking C major to A minor to D Dorian to G mixolydian, right? So I'm not saying that those are the correct changes of St. Thomas. That's just one way. Because it's based on rhythm changes, there are many ways you can play those chords. This is just uh, one way you can do it. And hopefully it gives you a different, like, approach to it. There's another tune I forgot to mention which has exactly that. So remember, you can drop a voice, create smaller voicings. If I drop the bass, I get this. That's a Django Reinhardt tune called uh, Micro. G. So it's exactly that. That movement. And then the chords. So let's say someone is copying away with those chords, right? you an understanding of how to harmonize chords. So like imagine you were writing for a big band. You need to understand how to write big block chords and stuff like that. So when we play the opposite direction, that's like kind of that, uh, like the famous ending, right? So let me do the same thing there, like. create a dominant chord. So if we take the second chord there, I can drop the E flat to D. That's D7. Now we have this. much every Beatles song, C to D to F, could even be C, D to F minor. So it's the same thing there, like the D7 there, it's not really a dominant chord, it's not going to G, it's just a movement, it's the same movement, just a different flavor. Or the last chord, the G sharp diminished, could be a D flat seven, which is a sub five. If 
if I really want to stretch things, I can play. Now you have the radio head. It's also an intro to a Stevie Wonder tune called Overjoyed. If what I'm showing you now is like making you think of other tunes with similar chord progressions, please let, please let me know in the comments. So I'm gonna leave you with the last tune, also a Django Reinhardt tune. Well, it's not by Django Reinhardt, but it's an old jazz standard called Dream of You, but Django famously recorded it, and it's my favorite Django Reinhardt tune. So it goes like this. <laughs> So there you have the exact same thing. But he plays a little bit uh, differently. These are the chords that I was shown anyway. I'm not sure that it's exactly what they play on the ori original recording or whatever, but so this voicing. But again, so that's we borrowed a note from the diminished chord above. Then diminished, diminished, or maybe that, and then major seven, which is again borrowing a note from from the diminished. So if I if you're confused what I mean by that, you can check out my first video on Barry Harris stuff. Diminished and another diminished chord, and then E six when he plays this. Which is just another way of voicing a six chord. So if we play it like Barry Harris, like the most basic chords, it would be this. Beatles, right?
right? So I hope that gave you some ideas and how you can think about chord changes in a different way. Think of it as voices moving, harmonic movement, rather than here's a chord with its scale and another chord. It's just a different outlook. So this book, he explains the scales. His, there are four different scales, right? Which I've also talked about in previous videos. And then you have a bunch of uh, just chord diagrams and they're it's all laid out for you. The different drop inversions and major as well as minor and the dominant scales. Then he talks about that organic diminished chord, which is what I was talking about that you can raise or drop a note. There are even more things you can do. You can drop two notes and create these kind of dominant flat five chords and get into the Thelonious Monk stuff. Uh, that's another thing I wanted to mention, but didn't have time in this video. It's the kind of Thelonious Monk movements, right? Like when you play like this. There's that flat three diminished. So he talks about that quite a lot and the diminished scale. There's so much stuff. I can't even mention everything. Then there's the movement idea, different, different movements and how you can use them. There's an arrangement of, is it like someone in love, I think? Can't find it right now. Different ways you can practice the scales, like someone in love, yeah, there's a arrangement where they kind of apply different ideas. And then different ways that you can voice chords, you can, as I said, you can omit a voice, like no tenor nor no bass or, or you can also double notes so you can create uh, chords where they're like doubles yeah that was a very brief overview of what's in this book so 121 pages this is one of those books where you can pretty much pick up pick it up and turn to any page and you can that's a week of practice just that one page and you can probably have this book for the rest of your life so Again, I'll post a link to where you can get a copy. And uh, yeah, can you think of other tunes that are similar to the ones we talked about in this video? Please let me know. And uh, thanks for watching and I shall see you next time.